officially cleared. A lot better than we thought. Bigger is better, right? All right, big day for Dylan. Oh. What we got here is drive shaft shop, carbon fiber drive shaft, and some axles over there. We'll check those out. But uh, the coolest thing about these drive shafts is, well, first off, super light, right? Yeah. Or I'm super strong. I don't know. One yeah, of the two. A little bit of both. One of the two. But yeah, like we actually worked with drive shaft shop on these back in like 2010, I want to say. And we actually ran these in the car through practice from Thursday through Friday morning and just seeing if we could break them because these actually get somewhere in like the 20 to almost 30 degrees of torsion from the transmission to the actual diff itself. And what that does is gives us a little bit of cushion as we're kicking the clutch and dropping the handbrake and everything else, getting the tires spun back up again. We put them in everything, every car. We've never broken one. We have one coming for my hot rod, which is getting a four speed and quick change in it now. Dylan's up on the lift, so we're gonna check his out. This is one of the super big bad mama jamma quick changes that we run in all the cars. And this is just one of those killer products. You just have to have it. You know. If you're going pro drifting, it's one of the deals. Quick yeah. change. Dog box transmission of some mm -hmm. sort, drive shaft shop axles and drive shafts. Like, That's it. And so the uh, drive shaft shop axles right here, you're getting those ready to plunge in. And these are like custom uh, outers, like a 930 CV, super big shaft, and then custom outputs that fit into the BMW. We have another set that are coming that's gonna be full billet. These are um, the factory casting that they actually punched out, added a thicker billet spline into it. Yeah, this is pretty stellar. I didn't know they actually did it this way. But yeah, so see how they actually punch this thing out, build this out of billet, and then uh, spline it and broach this, press it all together, and so now you have a super strong output because these are actually one of the first things to break. Uh, I mean, these guys are just the best. Frank and the team have been building the absolute best drivetrain for drift cars. Every single drift car has drive shop shop stuff in it. So my car is up in the air. Like I said, we just got my new four speed in there. So the first time this car has ever had an actual four speed box in it. And we took the entire rear end out of the pro car, which is sitting over there, and we swung it into this one. So now we have a quick change in this car. The idea of being able to have different gear ratios for all the different tracks is to allow you to change the wheel speed per the corner that you are trying to achieve the most grip or the least amount of grip. If it's a track like Seattle and you need to have a little more power for the big bank and you're not too worried about it for the inner turns. So you can actually adjust your ratio to bring the RPMs up to make the absolute max power at the big part of the course in the gear that you choose. So if you want to run fourth gear on the big bank, you can change your rear ratio so that you're actually sitting at the perfect point of power in your engine and you actually are able to spin the tires more freely. And so the reason why we stole the pro car setup is because I got a brand new setup for the pro car and that is this all new big, big boy quick change that we got from MA Motorsports. They got their sweet little cover on the back. So this is now six bolt in the rear, which is mostly just for speed. It doesn't really give you any uh, benefits. The billet cover looks really nice, but six bolts instead of the 10, just a little quicker on that quick change. Getting ready to swing on to our new subframe that he also modified for us. We were gonna do it in-house. We were running out of time, but now we have a lot of time, so whatever. We have even bigger axles from Drive Shaft Shop going into this thing, but we got her up on the table. We're gonna sling the uh, diff into the subframe and get all fitted up, sling it into the car, just make sure everything fits right. But we have uh, a lot of cool drivetrain stuff going on today. It all feels right. It all feels good. It's yes. all brand new. It's all super clean, right? <laughs> super clean. <laughs> <laughs> this is how the quick change works. It's super crazy. You have the drive shafts comes through, hits the input snout, and there's a actual shaft that runs all the way through here. That's the other end of it. See if I spin here, that guy's spinning. And then there's a set of gears that go here and here. There you go. Put Punch those way. guys Winter on. side out, of course. Winter side out. And what this does is it now spins the pinion, which is what you would normally see in a final drive, uh, where you have the little pinion come in here and turn the ring gear. Now the pinion is up top, spins backwards, spins the ring gear back forwards. Yeah, <laughs> they they, right, they right. have to reverse cut it so that we're not driving backwards at 90 miles an hour. And so now you can see as he's messing with that front, you can see how this turns this. What it does is it allows you to drive your actual um, gear the proper way to make the most amount of power for the car. So you're getting the RPMs all the way up and making 100% power all the time. So while we're trying to fit up this differential into the subframe, 
we realized that this ear is bent out a little bit, probably from all the heat because it's such a thick plate, it pulled it a little bit. We're trying to mess with it with the porter power. Can't get a good grip on it. So it was a matter of how do we secure something in here to allow us to be able to press off of it. So extra metal. We're gonna tack this guy right into here and we're gonna put a little piece over on this side to hold it level. So now we have a nice level surface that we can pour the power off of. All right, dip is in. It actually cleared a lot better than we thought. Just had to give a little little clearancing right here for this big old new drive shaft shop axle. This is what I was talking about. Bigger is better, right? Quick test fit. Put this thing back in the car. Make sure this this is like a, maybe a little higher than our old one. Make sure that clears in the floor. See if we have to modify it. So we already had the other one in. So we know the threads and everything are good. Mm -hmm. She's gonna want some tilt. Cause the car is leaning. All right, the dead blow. Yeah. We're gonna help it on the shoulders. There she goes, there she goes. We're in. Woo! Clears. So yeah, plenty of room on that upper tube. That's what I was worried about. Best part about going to car, you gotta build everything twice. There she goes. All right, so this is the part that I was telling you about with all the different gear ratios. Look at all these different ratios you can get from Winters. So it's a little ridiculous. Outside of that, we're just finishing up this subframe jig, getting it together. I just finished stacking this up and tacking it up. And now that we have the uh, vertical supports cut and we have a couple different pieces ready to go for uh, final fitment. Um, I had one of these jigs a long time ago and now I'm just building a new one off of this setup so that we can make a spare for the other car and also have a spare on the trailer for in case we have a wreck. So I'm going to now remove this setup. Hopefully it comes off. I just got her all tacked in and sometimes things pull and twist when you tack it up. So uh, before I finish welding it all, I wanna make sure it's still nice and straight. After messing with that for way too long, uh, we decided to just screw it, cut it off. We're gonna do the nuts in the bottom, kind of the way I wanted to do it the first time, but I didn't. So I'm on, and now we are. Use the clamp, make sure they're nice and level. There's a subframe jig. And so from here, we can build out our extra mounts for the new suspension points, the differential hanger itself, the quick change hanger, and anything else that we change on the subframes so that we now have a nice straight, true jig to make sure the subframe's straight, and then we'll have all the points so we can make all of our subframes match. So, all good. Back to it.
custom tubular exhaust manifold. We're over here having a disco party with Jason. And uh, we're going to build a replica of this for the new project coming up that we're doing with Nissan and Valvoline. 